All right, thank you. Uh, I realize that I'm really short, and this is like really, really <laughs> one of the fun things of being short. Uh, so yeah, we'll do it this way around, because then you can actually see me. And I like doing this a lot. Um, so hi, I'm Jenny. Um, nice to meet you all. Hello, Vienna. Um, I haven't met a lot of you, so I just want to start today by asking you to stand up if you're not from Vienna. All right. So I was really unlucky during break when I met everyone who was from Vienna. <laughs> OK, great. Um, and I hope a lot of you are from Austria, yeah. the people who stood up, or did you come from afar? No, no talks. OK, cool. OK, <laughs> sorry. Um, so yeah, my name's Jenny. I'm from the UK, I'm from, originally from Manchester. And I have a really bad tendency, especially when I'm in England, to talk really fast, even for the British people. So <laughs> if I talk fast, just put your hand up and tell me to slow down, and I will not be offended. I will try my best to not go too fast. Um, it's just the way I am. So, you guys understand that? I know I can talk too fast, and yeah. All right, cool. So first of all, I want to introduce you to my family. Clicker, please work. Clicker doesn't work. This is so much fun. Here we go. Uh, so yeah, you saw this a second ago. This is me, my brother, and my mum at Christmas um, a few years back having a selfie, like you do. Um, and I want to introduce you especially to my mum. So the reason why I want to introduce you to my mum is because when I grew up, um, she used to give me pocket money. And she would give me like 5p or coppers. So that's like 1p, 2p, so like 1 cent, 2 cents. And it would be like, you couldn't buy anything. You could buy like a sweet, like a one penny sweet or... Um, you can buy a toy, you can buy like a new car or anything, and it really made me angry, because I was like, but I want a new toy, I want, I, want, I want new this and new that, and she'd be like, well, you know, Jenny, and she used to tell me this a lot, a hundred pennies make a pound, Jenny, a hundred pennies make a pound, so every time I'd be like, mom, mom, can I ever have this like new toy, she's like, well, have you saved up, have you, have you actually gone and saved all your pennies to make a pound, and I'd be like, no, because I'm really bad with money and I spend it and eat sweets instead. <laughs> but, you know, my dentist never hated me, so that's okay. <laughs> and now that I'm a bit older, um, I was thinking about this. I was having Christmas dinner with my mum and she was talking, we were talking about how I've moved away from home, we never see each other, and we were laughing about all the stupid things I used to do. And one of the things that she said was like, do you remember every 100 pennies make a pound? I was like, yes, mother. <laughs> and um, so yeah, um, whilst I was thinking about this, I realized actually, in an open source project like WordPress, 100 pennies do make a pound. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So let's have a look at the next big thing that's going to hit WordPress. It's the WordPress API. We've got a few talks on it today, um, and everyone who's a developer should have heard about this, and if you haven't, please go to the website and have a look at it. It's coming, really is coming. Um, don't ask me when, because I don't know. <laughs> um, but when we look at the stats, does the statistics of WordPress API, a new feature of WordPress, it's quite interesting. It's taken to date 1,797 commits to get WordPress API to the point that it is today. And this was this morning. I updated these stats this morning. It has taken 485 pull requests. And what's interesting, only 43 of those are currently open. They're all public. They're all on GitHub. 598 issues from the project being started on GitHub have been opened. Only 176 of those are now still open. And I'm sure they're new issues rather than issues that were there at the very beginning. And what's really interesting about this huge new feature is that only 51 contributors on GitHub have actually been working on this project. So something that's going to affect all our sites, 
the 23% of the word of the internet that WordPress goes and utilizes, 51 people have had a hand in that. That's quite impressive. So, as you've noticed, I'm quite an interactive person. So another interactive section. Hands up if you are a WordPress user. Awesome. Don't judge, there will be non-WordPress users in the room and that's absolutely fine. And hands up if you've contributed to WordPress before. People, look around. Keep your hands up, people. Look around. A second ago, most of your hands were up. Yet now, there's hardly anyone with their hands up. To the people who have contributed before, thank you. You are making it that little bit better, one bug at a time. So to the rest of you, why? <laughs> so I've been here, I've done this, and I won't tell you which of these excuses are mine, but quite a few of them are. And I hear this time and time again. So you can giggle all you like, but I'm sure one of these will, will really feel like the one that you would like to use the most. So let's get to it. Which excuse would you like first? I don't want to code when I go home. If you are a developer and you develop nine to five at work, the last thing on your head is, yeah, I'm gonna go home, have dinner, and do more work. That doesn't really feel like fun to me. <laughs> at least not to me anyway. That's like more work. Um, and I understand that, that's cool. If that's your excuse, that's fine. What about the excuse, I'm not a developer, therefore I can't contribute to WordPress? How many of people have that excuse in their head? Or oh, the excuse, I don't know anything. I'm not a good enough developer, I'm not a good enough designer, I'm not a good enough business person, or insert job title <laughs> into section. Um, I don't know enough. We all suffer from this, it's absolutely fine. I don't know what to do. Maybe you've thought about contributing to WordPress or contributing to any other open source project. But when you get there, you're like, yeah, I want to do it. Now what? What's your excuse? Anyone dare tell me their excuse? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> so I've been there, I've done that. I've definitely used more than one of those excuses, if not all those excuses at some point in my life. Um, and I'm here to tell you there was a game changer in my life. Um, I actually went to a WordCamp, just like this one, WordCamp London. It was the very first WordCamp London. Um, it happened in 2013. We've just had our second and it was awesome. And um, at that WordCamp London, it, they had a contributor day. It was a one day event after the WordCamp and the whole idea was that you went along and you learnt about how you could contribute to WordPress. So, being the first contributor day in the UK, I was like, oh, I didn't really want to travel to London because being from Manchester, it's a really far away and really expensive. So, the only reason why I went to this WordCamp was because of the contributor day. And what I learnt from that contributor day was that actually, everybody can contribute to WordPress. And I mean everybody. Even if you've never used WordPress before, you can still contribute to WordPress. You'll be surprised. So, how? Okay, if you are thinking about contributing to WordPress, the one address that you need to remember is make.wordpress.org. It has everything in there I'm not saying you can find it easily, but it is in there. <laughs> That's a different question altogether. Um, so yeah, it is what I call the home of the WordPress contributing project. It's where you'll find everything, all the information you want, and what you will see when you get in there is actually the WordPress project is split into different teams. And the reason why we split people into different teams is because we want people in an area that they're comfortable with or an area that they want to learn about. So I'm gonna run through some of the areas that you can actually contribute to WordPress. And I'll, 
if you don't find something that you are interested in, or you don't feel that you can contribute at the end of it, please talk to me after the, the session during lunch, um, because I'm sure I can find you something to do. <laughs> and I'll accept that challenge. So first, the accessibility team. So WordPress is really, really popular because it's accessible. It's really accessible to anyone and everyone. And the reason why is because there's a really dedicated team of people who go in after all the developers have updated all the beautiful UIs and stuff and go, by the way, that doesn't work, that doesn't work, that doesn't work, and that doesn't work. Um, they check that anyone using anything can actually ac uh, access the WordPress backend, and all the different features. It's a really important part of growing WordPress project and getting it out to more people as well. Being accessible is super important. And when I talk about accessibility, it's not just about people who are deaf or blind. Everyone in this room knows at least one person in your lives who has an accessible issue. Maybe that's a disability, or maybe it's just you know, they have RSI, um, repetitive strain injury, where they can't use a mouse. And if you don't think you know somebody with that issue, then you're looking at one. Me without glasses is me, well, I just can't see anything. <laughs> um, if I ever want a day off, I just break my glasses and be like, yeah, I can't see anything, what a shame. But with the accessibility team means that I can actually still develop and code without my glasses as long as I knew where all the key or shortcuts were. So accessibility is super important. Cool. Can I get some water? Thanks. Um, so cool. When we think of cool, that's what people think of for the WordPress project. Um, you get... Um, you get lots of different parts of WordPress, but core is what you download, really. Thank you. Oh, no, no, it's cool. Ooh. <laughs> this is so going well. <laughs> um, so yeah, cool. WordPress project. Once every time you download WordPress.org, you're downloading what the core team have been working on. The core team's really big. They have a lot of people working on that, and it's great. If you're a developer and you want to fix something and you want to feel like you're part of the center team, then I guess Core is for you. But Core is also for non-developers as well, because how many times have you downloaded WordPress, found a bug, and then got really angry because no one's fixed it? Yeah, someone's laughing, which means they definitely have done this. Um, the core team is, the core project is where you go and tell them that their bug is there. It will be a particular browser that no one else is using that you need to tell them about. And once someone brings it up, then someone else can fix it. So some of the common tasks that you'll see with core and actually with the rest of the project includes testing if an issue is a bug. We have a crazy long list of issues in core. It's, they have this thing called track, and it's basically a tracker of all the bugs that have ever happened in WordPress. And there's a lot of issues, as you can imagine. So having people to say, yes, this is a bug. No, this is not a bug. The same way we do that with our clients or with ourselves when we're trying to double check if we're going crazy or not. The core team also need people to do that. But also check if a bug fix so when a developer actually fixes something and then has a file that says, yeah, this is the solution to fix this, we need people to actually say, yeah, that also worked for me too. That worked for me. And the more people we have testing these fixes, the more likely those fixes are going to go back into the core project. And building new features. We don't stand on our morals in the WordPress community. We go and improve ourselves, just like the WordPress API. We try and improve WordPress to the best it can be. And we need people, we need developers, and we need non-developers to build and test these features. And also come up with ideas. How can we make WordPress better? All these ways of making WordPress better have come from people who are just like you and me, humans who saw a need and then thought, hey, that might be a good feature plugin. UI. 
So the UI team look after all the user experience of WordPress. They redesigned WordPress API, uh, the WordPress backend. They do all the little icons. So every time you want a new icon, you can go and ask them to create one for you if you have an idea that will make it more easy for people to use WordPress. Um, they're also looking at things like the image flow links and the image flow editor. How many people have tried to use the image editor and just never understood what was happening? They're actually going through the project at the moment and trying to work out a better solution for that. They're also looking at the core CSS roadmap and how we can actually make it sustainable long term. The mobile team. How many people here know that there's actually a mobile app you can download onto your phones and actually write blog posts on your phone that is linked directly to your WordPress site? A few of you. Not all of you. <coughs> Hope that wasn't a phone. Um, so the mobile team are the team that build this. They build the iOS app, the Android app, and the Windows app. They need people who can not only write Java, Objective-C, or C-sharp, but they also need designers to help them design the best interface for those apps, the best experience for all our users and ourselves. Polyglots. Now, I know I'm in Vienna, which basically means everyone here at least I hope, can understand English and another language, which I assume is German is the official language, if I'm correct. So you are all polyglots by nature. But if you can even have a third language, that's great. The polyglot team are amazing. They translate WordPress into all the other languages all over the world. Well, now, we have a talk on this later, so I'm not going to dwell too much, but I'd like to point a few things out to you. First of all, only six months ago, WordPress 4.0 came out. And it was the first time that local downloads surpassed English downloads. That's amazing. The international community are downloading it in their local language more than the standard American English language. That's great. Now, we're in Austria, so let's look at the WordPress locales for this kind of area. German. The locales officially with WordPress currently are formal German and informal German, which makes no sense to me, but I'm sure it makes sense to you guys. <laughs> I have German cousins. I understand about two words of German, so if anyone wants to teach me German later, please feel free. Now let's look at Austrian locales. I understand that you have an Austrian version of German. Austrian German. You have Alemannic, did I pronounce that correctly? And Austro Bavarian? Yeah, yeah. And you have actually, I was talking to someone at break time and they said um, you have actually a lot of other minority local languages that are like just a certain region in your country. Yeah, China's like that too, so I totally know how you feel. Um, and when we look at this Austrian locales, even just the three major locales in Austria, for WordPress, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. You don't have an Austrian-German locale. Why? Even the Brits have English GB, because we got bored of howdy and wanted hello. <laughs> so why not? Why are you subjecting your, you know, Alemannic clients to formal German? Why not have an Alemannic WordPress. There's no reason why not. Anyway, there's a talk later, so you can think about it. Support. I'm assuming everyone here, because you're WordPress users, have at least had a problem with WordPress at some point in your life with WordPress. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, nods. I've had them too. Answering questions on the support forums and even asking questions on the support forums is one of the best ways to contribute to WordPress with the least amount of effort. All you need is a WordPress.org user account. You log into the forums and you answer a question that you know. Doesn't matter what question, any question. 
That's it. Everybody knows the answer to something that someone else doesn't know. And that's really important to remember. Documentation. How many people here have used a codec? Yeah, right. Some poor person had to write that codec. And some poor person also has to keep that codec up to date. Those documentations on the WordPress.org site needs to be written. I'm a really bad writer, which is why I don't have a blog. But I'm sure a lot of you have written before or have written things for your company, for your clients. Are you giving them back to the WordPress project as well? That same stuff could just go back to the WordPress project. And in fact, the documentation team have gone through a big revival about a year ago where they're actually writing out new handbooks to make it easier for new people to use WordPress. They're updating WordPress inline documentation for all you developers out there. And now they're also, built, they've been building and now using a new codec which is called Developer Hope which you can go to at developer.wordpress.org. Um, and there you get more information about your functions. I'm sorry if you're not a developer, that probably just went over your head. But it's super cool, that's all you need to know. And we need more document writers. Themes. So the theme team do not make themes, just to let you know. Um, in fact, what they do is they review every single theme that goes onto the theme repo, so the repository. Um, and they have to be done by human. It's literally someone going in and checking line by line all the code. Sounds really painful, but people do it. And you do not have to be a developer to do this. If you are a developer, great. If you are a theme developer, even better. Because actually, by doing a theme review of somebody else's theme, you will learn what is good practices for your theme development and what is bad practices. But if you're not a theme developer, if you're just a user, and you're thinking about going joining this, joining this team, then actually it's a really good one because you get to see what good codes look like and what bad code looks like. And there's lots of support. In fact, all these teams have great support infrastructures around them. Meta. I like to call Meta like the godparents of um, the WordPress.org. They basically look after the whole of WordPress.org, anything on WordPress.org. All the tools we use, the website, all the things we need. For all the other teams, they kind of like just give you stuff when they're free. Um, and they provide lots of support for all the other teams. They're a really small team. Considering they're supporting the whole of all the other teams, they're a really small team. Um, so if you can help support the Meta team, help them, that'd be amazing. You're not helping the WordPress thing that you download, but actually you're helping everyone else. And that's amazing. Training. So this is quite a new team. It started last year at WordCamp San Francisco, so that was in October. And what they're doing is they're creating downloadable lesson plans and training manuals for people who are trainers and instructors to use in workshop environments. That's super cool. But I know there's a lots of people who do this for their clients anyway. You could actually contribute your workshop manuals back to the WordPress project. So there is a standard set that people can use all over the world. Wouldn't that be really handy? And if you enjoy teaching people, or if you've been a teacher in the past, you guys have been trained in the way to teach people the best. So even testing these workshop manuals and training instructions would be really helpful. Getting feedback is some of the hardest things to do. WordPress TV. How many people here have used WordPress TV? Watched a video on there? Not many of you, actually. So if you don't know it, WordPress TV is the home of all the videos from all the word counts and user groups that do have videos on the internet. It literally is WordPress.tv, so it's hard, not hard to forget. Remember. Remember, definitely remember. Um, so, one of the things about WordPress TV is that actually every video gets reviewed. So, someone has to sit there and moderate the videos. And they get, go through post-production as well. So, if you're a bit of a video 
geek, nerd, then that'd be amazing if you could lend your skills to the WordPress TV team. But the other thing about WordPress TV is they tried to subtitle all of the videos, and there was a lot of videos on there. And the reason why they're trying to do that is if they can subtitle it into English, or the, uh, or the videos, then we can translate them to all the other languages, which means that if you don't speak English, you can still watch the videos and it'll be subtitled. So if you can help do that, that would be amazing. The community. Now, community is my forte, so I can ramble on a bit. So that's all cool. But the community is all about organizing meetups, work camps, and also just helping each other out. Now, from what I understand, there is only one WordPress meetup in the whole of Austria, in Vienna, which I understand because it's the capital, but what I don't understand is why Vienna is so far east. What do the people in the west do? Do they just like, I don't know. Like, I've never been around your country, so I'm not gonna <laughs> make judgments, but you need to think about it. We have a saying in English, two is a company, three is a crowd, four is a party. The meetups do not have to be big. They can be really small. It can just be at a coffee shop or at a restaurant or at your, someone's house or an office to meet up together and discuss the good things about WordPress, the bad things about WordPress and just support each other is super important to ensuring that our ecosystem of the WordPress community stays healthy. It's really important, and I would love if in a year's time there was another WordPress meetup somewhere else in Austria. I'm super lazy, and most Brits also feel the same way when we say that a meetup shouldn't be far enough from your house so that when you go and have a drink, you can definitely get a taxi home and it wouldn't cost you the world. Um, I don't know how you feel about that, but I would recommend it to be close to you. If there isn't one physically near you because you're quite a rural, in a quite rural area, think about doing it offline. Nomad user groups. There's a Nomad PHP which has no location. They just go on Google Hangouts and hang out together. You could do an Austrian version. Or Nomad JS, which is the same principle. When I talk about speaking, and I'm going to go through this really quickly because I know I'm holding people up for lunch. Um, <laughs> speaking is really important. Just like me standing on the stage having loads of technical faults and issues and clicker issues, it's absolutely fine. Sharing knowledge is really important. And the reason why I say sharing knowledge is really important is because I want you to learn from my mistakes. And I want to learn from your mistakes. But I also want to learn the things that you've done well so that I can copy them. Sharing knowledge is about making it easier for someone to get to the pain point and get over that pain point that you've just gone through. I don't want you to go through the same potholes that I have gone through. And by sharing this knowledge together, we can help each other. We can learn from each other what you don't know, but we can share what we do know. And the great thing about sharing experiences is that no one can tell your experiences wrong. No one, because it was your experience. No one can tell me that my high school experience was an epic, because you guys didn't go to my high school. So start small, share with your friends, share with your colleagues, and that way the WordPress ecosystem gets a little bit bigger too. Think about it, user groups and word camps. This, on, this is the first work camp in Austria. It's amazing. I'm so privileged to be here. And it's amazing to see all you people here too. But there's no excuse for not having another one. Maybe a year's time in Vienna, maybe somewhere else in Austria. What's stopping you? Now, I'm also going to quickly just go through the sister projects. BuddyPress. Glot Press and BB Press. They're all sister projects of WordPress, and they also need contributors. So what's next? In the UK, what happened was I started Contributor Days. I decided that Contributor Days were great with work grants because everyone was really excited and all in one location, but there was no reason why at a user group we couldn't also have a Contributor Day. So I started a Contributor Day on its own. And trust me, I knew nothing about how to contribute to WordPress. I was just like, 
help. And people helped. So now we're working on making contributor days easier for people to set up. But think about it, all you need is Wi-Fi, somewhere that isn't raining, which is probably easier than Manchester, so that helps. It can be online or offline, so like together in a room or actually just do it remotely. You go to the make.wordpress.org website, you pick a group, you pick a team, you look for a handbook, um, it's a section called Getting Involved, and then you find a page called Getting Started Our Contributor Day. There's also another thing that you should do. You should get on the Slack channel. If you're thinking about contributing to WordPress, get on the Slack channel, because that's where you're gonna get help remotely. Everyone who contributes to WordPress is on there, and it's a global um, channel, so you get people from all different time zones. So please, get contributing. Remember, we're all part of the WordPress community. If you're not sure, please ask. Ask your peers, ask me, ask anyone in the, on the Twitter land or Slack, just ask. There's no such thing as a stupid question. And feel free, if you choose a group, to switch to another one. And don't forget, time zone differences. People do sleep and it's absolutely okay. <laughs> so I challenge you all to share the knowledge you have, to contribute to WordPress and help build a sustainable Austrian community and get contributing. Thank you.